She'd spent three hours in direct sunlight, her temperature even reaching 108 degrees Fahrenheit. As all of this was happening, Christopher Schultes was apparently distracted inside. Apparently, he was inside playing video games. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Cassie and this is A Wicked World. The story I have for you today is one that seemed like just a terrible accident when it first happened. But as more and more information starts to come to light, it's looking like that may not be the case. This is the story of Parker Schultes. Parker Schultes was born in October of 2021, and she lived in Miranda, Arizona, just north of Tucson, with her parents, Christopher and Erica Schultes, as well as her two older sisters whom she looked up to. Parker was a fun-loving free spirit who loved to paint, color, and she also adored animals. Now, Parker's parents, Chris and Erica, had begun dating in October of 2012. They had two daughters together who were seven and three when the couple's third and last child came along, Parker. Parker's mother, Erica, was well-educated, and she was an anesthesiologist. But despite Christopher studying biochemistry at Arizona State University, at the age of 37, he was unemployed. His responsibility, instead, was to take care of Parker during the day and her sisters when they weren't in school. On the afternoon of July 9, 2024, Christopher pulled back into the driveway of their home that was located on the 5100 block of West Payton Court. Here, he would park his blue Acura SUV. Now, normally, Christopher would park inside the home's garage, but on this day, he had to park in the driveway as the garage was full of a bunch of exercise equipment that was blocking the way. The father and his three girls had just returned from running a few errands, including grocery shopping. As they were headed back home, it was around the time that Parker normally took a nap, so the tired two-year-old fell asleep in her car seat. When they got back home that day, Christopher did not want to disturb her, so he decided instead to keep the car and the air conditioning running. Then, he left Parker in the car to finish her nap. A few hours later, at 4.08 p.m., 35-year-old Erica Schultes arrived home from work and asked her husband where Parker was. He told her he didn't know, and he and Erica looked around the house but couldn't find her. Then, Christopher remembered that he had left her outside in the car. As soon as he realized, both he and Erica ran outside. And there was two-year-old Parker, slumped over in her car seat and unresponsive. Erica immediately called 911. What's the location of your... 911, 911, please! What's the address? What's going on? My baby was in the car. She's not responsive. Okay, hold on, I'm going to transfer you to medical dispatcher. Stay on the line. Oh my god, oh my god. How long has it been? Half hour. It was, but it turned off. I've been checking. Oh my god. Oh my what are you reporting? She was in the car, sleeping. She's unresponsive. Okay, and who is please, she? Please, please, please. My is daughter. She? My daughter. And this was out in the driveway? Yes. Is she still breathing? No, she's not breathing right now. Okay, we need to start CPR right now. Yes, we are. We're starting CPR, yes. The help is on the way to you. I need to hear CPR. I need them to count it out for me. One, two, three, One, two, four. three. But my wife's a doctor. My wife's a doctor. She's home. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> No, no. Come on, baby. Okay, she's coughing. She's, she's coughing. No, 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 no. That's me compressing. Oh, that's compressing. Oh, my God, baby. CPR is still going on. Yeah, CPR is still going on. Okay, you're going to perform that until the baby. units arrive and take baby. over for you. Baby. 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 
Both Erica and Christopher performed CPR on their daughter until the paramedics arrived and they took over trying to resuscitate her. Parker was then rushed to Banner University Medical Hospital in Tucson, coincidentally the same hospital where Erica worked as an anesthesiologist. But unfortunately, when she arrived at the hospital, the two-year-old girl would be pronounced dead. Now the temperature outside when the 911 call had been placed was 109 degrees Fahrenheit which means that the temperature inside the car was much higher. And to make it even worse, Christopher's car had been parked in the direct sunlight, and Parker's car seat was on the driver's side, which meant that where he had parked left the sun beating directly down on her. When Christopher spoke with law enforcement, he told them that he had arrived back at their home at 2.30 p.m. Parker was asleep in the car, so he and her older sisters went inside, leaving her out there but he insisted he had left the air conditioning on. How long was she sleeping in the car out there? I want to say it was no more than 30, 45 minutes. And I don't think their air was off that entire time. I think there was a time in between. I had checked on her last, it was still running, she was still sleeping, and then when I went back out, the car was off. She's very hot right now, and we're gonna do everything we can. <sighs> oh my God. A police officer tells the dad they have to treat the home as a possible crime scene. So I'm being treated like a murderer? No. Police would obtain a search warrant the same day, and they would seize and tow the Acura in which Parker had died. Multiple other items were seized by authorities, including a PlayStation 5, a car seat, an Apple computer with a charging cord, an iPhone, a pink flower dress, and pink sandals. Authorities were also able to check security cameras that belonged to the family's neighbors. And when they did, they found that little Parker had actually been outside in the scorching hot car much longer than Christopher claimed. The footage actually showed Christopher pulling back into the driveway at 12.53 p.m., not 2.30 p.m., as he had claimed. So Parker had been sitting outside in that hot car for over three hours. Christopher told police that he had gone out periodically and checked on his daughter in the car. But apparently, he had gotten distracted. First, by putting away the groceries that he had bought, and then by playing PlayStation. So after finding out this information, authorities wanted to speak with Parker's two older sisters as well, who were five and nine at the time. One of the girls would tell investigators that Christopher had actually turned the car off before they went inside, which directly contradicted what Christopher said. She also said that her father had left her and her sisters in the car many times before, she estimated it was at least 59 times. And one of the girls said that her mother had told her to tell police that her dad was a good dad and what had happened to Parker was just an accident. Investigators would also discover text messages that were sent between Erica and her husband Christopher while Parker was on her way to the hospital. These text messages revealed that it was definitely not the first time he had left the girls alone in the car and Erica knew about it. She said to him, I told you to stop leaving them alone in the car. How many times have I told you? Christopher responded, babe, I'm sorry. She then said, we lost her. She was perfect. And he responded back by saying, babe, our family, how could I do this? I killed our baby. This can't be real. So police were still trying to figure out why if Christopher had left the air conditioning on inside the SUV as he claimed, it had just turned off at one point. What they found out was that the particular Acura model that the family owned had a safety feature in which it would shut off after 30 minutes of the car running idly. And the father would admit to detectives that he knew that the SUV did this due to his past experiences. So on July 12th, Christopher Schultz was placed under arrest and charged with second degree murder. He was then given a $1 million bond. And here's the body camera footage of police making his arrest. He's coming out here, Christopher. No. It's okay. It's okay. No. Okay. okay. So, no. listen. Listen. No. Listen. No. This doesn't change. You're not going to hurt this. This doesn't change what, what's going on. So remember how we talked about the investigation and things that would transpire. Uh -huh. Okay. And I told you I'm always going to tell you guys the truth. There's no, I'm, there's no secrets here, right? Uh -huh. 
So based off of our investigation at this point, right, we have determined that there's probable cause to go ahead and charge you for what happened. Okay. Oh my God. So it's come out here, Christopher. No. It's okay. It's okay. No. Okay. So no. listen. Listen. No. Listen. Okay. No. This doesn't change what you happened. Really this doesn't change what what's going on. Okay. No. What happens at this point? It's simple. Okay. What happens at this point is you are going to be taken into custody, all right, no. and you will be booked. And then after you are booked, you have an initial appearance with the judge within the first 24 hours, okay? After the first 24 hours, all right, the judge will determine bond and things like that as far as what happens next. At that point, the case goes to the courts. It'll be between you, it'll be between your attorneys, and it'll be between the, the, the county prosecutor. Okay. So, again, I can't change the, the consequences of what happened, all right? But what, I, what I'm gonna ask of you... Oh, okay. Could I just have you stand up for me, please? Come on, Chris, let's, let's yeah. go out here. Can you grab him some shoes, Chris? No, come on, come on, Chris, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Can you just can you say bye to our kids? Okay. So 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 listen to what I'm saying. I'm not resisting. Please. Okay. Just relax. Oh, I, just I relax, Christopher. I need you to listen. Just okay. relax. So just relax. Just relax. Just relax. And and these are the options. Okay. The reason that I'm here and meeting <laughs> with you in person. <laughs> the reason I'm here meeting with you in person is because I don't want this to be anything more than what it needs to be at its so, base level. So you know, okay. I don't want as the kids as to be traumatized. So I don't want the kids. I don't want the kids to see dad get hauled off. Seriously, am I going to be there for my baby's funeral? That's going to be between you and the court. Okay. Can I give him a kiss? Yeah. Hold yeah. on. I love you. There you go. Chris, I'm going to be here and I'll take care of everything. I love you. I love you. The funeral is private. No heart. No f***ing heart at all. Okay. You go with the normal conversation. Yeah. So, I know there's a lot going on and I know you're angry. And it's okay to be angry, okay? As an arresting officer, I can't change the law. I know. But seriously? Mom. His daughter, he's suffering. Mom. I know. The funeral. Mom, he knows. I, I know. Mom. I know Mom. he's feeling the guilt. I know he's feeling anguish. I can't change the law. Okay? So the next steps after this, okay, he's going to county right now. He'll be booked. He has to see a judge within 24 hours. That's the law. He'll see a judge within 24 hours. Okay? At that initial appearance, between him, the judge, and the prosecutor is what's determined as far as his conditions of release, mm -hmm. and he bond, things like that. And then as far as what proceeds forward with regards to the charges, how the county attorney decides to issue the case, what they feel is best, that's going to be in the court system and with the prosecutors. Okay. All right, my involvement up to the point of issuing today, it, it's done. Like, I, I don't have any more. I can't change the law, all right? Obviously, I understand you're just I know. a messenger. And it's okay for you to be angry at me. I'm not, I'm not offended. Like, it's okay to vent your frustration. Um, but just, I need to, I want you guys to understand that this has to take place. This is something that has to go forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm not sure if he covered it, but he may not be held. It's, it's up to the judge whether or not he's held. So there's he doesn't. It's not like he's, he doesn't have prior history and things like that. They take this into consideration. Okay. And obviously they take into consideration the family dynamics of what's going on. During his first court appearance, which was the same day as his arrest, Christopher was seen hanging his head in shame. And he remained silent as he was informed of his charges. Erica also spoke during Christopher's court hearing, and unbelievably, she asked the judge to let Christopher go and be back home with her and her other two daughters so they could all grieve properly together. She said that Parker's passing was a big mistake and it did not represent who Christopher was as a person. I just wanted to say that no one understands how great of a tragedy this is more than myself, my girls, my remaining two daughters, and Christopher. So not only do we have to move forward with grieving for my daughter, but we potentially could be losing our, her, their father. 
So the absolute worst case scenario for our family is if Chris were be away from us. We're already hurting. No one else shares this bond and this trauma like all of us, all four of us. I know the significance of the tragedy and I, I don't want you to think for a second that I underestimate the impact that it has on our lives, on everyone's lives, or that I'm undermining your concerns about the safety of those in our household. So I'm just asking if you can allow him to come home to us so we can all start the grieving process so that he can bury our daughter with us this upcoming week and that we can go through this whole process together as a family. Um, he's an amazing father. He's a pillar of our community. He's been a coach for young kids. He's taken them to school every day. He's been the main care caregiver. I work many hours, so they're all that he sees. This was a, a big mistake, and I think that it, this doesn't represent him. And I just want that the girls to see their father so that I don't have to tell them tonight that they're going to endure another loss. And in a bid for his release, the defense pointed out that Christopher had no criminal record, aside from a DUI that he had gotten 15 years ago. He had been charged with assault in the past as well. However, those allegations were withdrawn. Mr. Schultz has uh, significant ties to the community, no criminal history whatsoever. This is the kind of offense that is extremely unlikely to reoccur. Um, I don't believe that he poses a danger to the community now, although his actions on that day may have. Um, I, For all of those reasons, um, I am actually going to release him to pretrial services supervision. I don't believe that a money bond is appropriate um, at this time. However, sir, I am ordering that you do not possess or consume any alcohol or illegal drugs. Do not possess any firearms or submit to any monitoring or treatment that's directed by pretrial services. Also, sir, um, and ma'am, I'd, I'd like you to hear this as well. I am ordering that you are not to have any unsupervised contact with minors. You are not to be alone with children. They cannot be alone in your care while this case is pending. So your wife mentioned that she works a lot of hours. You're going to have to find a different child care scenario um, if she's at work, you cannot be home alone with children. Um, that being said, I'm not I'm not prohibiting contact, just unsupervised contact. I, one thing I didn't mention is that I have taken an extended leave from work so that I will be home with the kids. I just wanted to make that known. The judge would end up allowing it, and Christopher was released without even having to post bond. So even though Christopher's wife was standing by him and saying that Parker's death did not represent who he was as a person, other people did not have quite the same things to say about him. Multiple ex-girlfriends have spoken out and said that Christopher was narcissistic, manipulative, a compulsive liar, and a cheater. His exes have also said that he was very immature and liked to play video games all the time. Hmm, no kidding. Then, there was Christopher's other daughter. Apparently, Christopher had an older daughter who was 16 from a previous relationship. And she was not a big fan of her father. She said that she was not surprised that Parker had died in the hot car that day because Christopher had actually been known to leave her in the car as well when she was younger. The girl claimed that at one time her father Christopher had made her sit outside for four to five hours inside a car and she had to keep restarting it in order to keep the air conditioning on. The teen also said that that same day she had only eaten once and since she has type 1 diabetes, that is very dangerous. Now, Christopher had not even met this daughter until she was five years old. And when he did, that's when he began fighting for custody of her. Even though the teen did not want to live with her father at all, unfortunately, the court ordered it, and she ended up living with Christopher and Erica for about four years. That time of her life, she said, is best described as a nightmare. At one point in 2021, things got so bad for the now 16-year-old that she even tried to take herself out of this world. Luckily for her, Christopher soon after lost custody once Child Protective Services got involved. So the teenager has also been interviewed by detectives and is now involved in the case. She also hopes to testify if Christopher's case goes to trial. When police inspected Christopher's phone after Parker's death, they found text messages that showed he also had a serious drinking problem. There was a text message sent by Erica to her husband on March 11th that read, you haven't shown that you can stop putting the girls in danger or treating me badly. Even yesterday, you drove home drunk with two minors. 
You drink to excess every time. I've been asking for three years for you to cut back and it's actually gotten worse. Then 10 days later on March 21st, she sent him another text message in which she said, why were you going 138 with our baby in the car and alcohol in your system? Great question. And Chris responded back to this text message, making himself the victim, saying, You hate me. She was sleeping. It's fine. What a man-child. Why was he ever trusted to take care of children when he's one himself? On the day that Parker died, as I had said earlier, one of the places that Christopher and the girls had gone was the grocery store. But even though all three girls were with him that day, no one saw the girls inside the grocery store, meaning he likely left them outside in the car alone, again. And after the grocery store, Christopher had gone to a gas station. He was seen there on surveillance video, walking in, then going over to a cooler and picking up three beers. He then brought them into the men's room where he spent one or two minutes before opening the door and coming back outside holding at least one of those beers. And he made no attempt to pay for any of the drinks, just walking right out the door to his car. During a grand jury hearing on August 1st, 2024, Christopher's charges were upgraded from second degree murder to first degree murder. He was additionally charged with child abuse, which meant the prosecutors believed that Christopher had intentionally killed his daughter Parker. For first degree charges, it must be premeditated and deliberate. A close friend of the Schultz named Kristen Swenson has organized a memorial fundraiser on GoFundMe to honor Parker's memory. The goal is to raise $10,000 in order to cover her funeral expenses and other related costs. Well, thank you for listening to Parker's story today. While I'm not sure if Christopher actually killed his daughter on purpose, I do know that his very irresponsible actions were what directly led to her death that day. Actions that had been repeated time and time again, even prior to that. And his wife knew that not only had Christopher left their children in the car, but he had also been drinking with them in the car. Yet, she still continued to let him care for the three girls on his own. So I think she deserves to be held partially responsible for negligence. What do you think? So if you like true crime and you want to hear it from me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and turn on your notifications too, so you'll know when I upload a new video, which is at least twice every week. Thanks for watching A Wicked World today. Until next time, take care guys. Bye. Thank you to all the patrons of A Wicked World. Now, there's even more of A Wicked World on Patreon. So check it out at patreon.com slash awickedworld or use the Patreon app. You'll have access to exclusive videos each month and more. Any support truly helps to make sure the victims never get forgotten and to highlight the shortcomings of society associated with each case. Do you have a suggestion for a case you'd like to see me cover? If so, send me an email at awickedworldtruecrime at gmail.com.